This podcast is being recorded and produced on Gadigal land. We pay our respects to the traditional custodians of this country and elders past, present. We extend our respect to any First Nations, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. I'm Brittany Saunders. And I'm All Right Hey, and this is High Scrollers, the podcast version of your favourite group chat. If it's trending, going viral or has you gripped, we're talking about it. Coming up on this episode, I've been ripped off by a local cafe and I'm not happy about it. You may have seen the video on the internet earlier this week. Brittany's got a few questions about the situation and I've got some questions for her as well. Plus, I have finally watched a show that everyone has already watched years ago, I feel, and I'm better late than never. And I share my thoughts on some of the juicy sex scenes in the show and there is a lot. Plus, are you a good person? We have the ultimate test and (laughs) Brittany is kind of shocked by my answer. I'm not surprised by hers, though. And are we making a smash hit song? Song of the summer, baby. Yeah. I feel like we need to make it happen anyway. We discuss it. Deal me and Dole. Let's go. Matt, you've got something to tell us. (laughs) Why? What do I have to tell you? I saw something on your, I think your TikTok and your story on the weekend Uh and I need to know. Okay. Because I'm not sure if it, like, I couldn't believe that it was true. <laughs> so I need to know if you were making it up or not. Apparently, you went somewhere and they were charging $12.20 <gasps> for an ice, iced mocha. Was that yeah, what it was? Yeah, an iced mocha on oat milk. But the oat milk was only 80 cents. Yeah. Right. If you Okay. Yeah. No. And you know what? I'm glad you brought this up, actually, because <laughs> you obviously own a cafe. So mm. I want to ask you some questions because maybe you can give me a different perspective. So, Scrollers, if you didn't see, um, the other day I went to go get a coffee. I went to get an iced mocha at a cafe here in Sydney. And I said, just an iced mocha with oat milk. And she said, $12.20. And I thought, oh, my goodness, that's like a lot of money for an iced coffee, right? And then I said, well, how much is a hot mocha? Because I'd been to that cafe in the past and got a hot mocha and I could swear it wasn't up in, you know, the double figures. I was thinking yep. it was around $5. And then she's like, it's five twenty for a hot mocha. And so that's a $7 difference between a hot coffee and an iced version. Yeah. And, you know, a million things are running through my mind. I'm going, <laughs> okay, so obviously there could be some costs here. Like, because I know, you know, when I used to work at a cafe, um, we definitely charged more for an iced latte, but it was like $2 more, which, yes. I, which I still don't think in my mind is justified, but like, <laughs> sure, whatever, $2 I can let slide. $7 difference from hot to cold. And, you know, being an ex barista as well, you know, it's less work to do an ice latte because all I have to do is do the shots. I don't have to heat the milk. Don't have to put any chocolate powder on top. Don't need to do anything. It's really simple, quite simple to make an ice latte. So it didn't make sense in my brain. And I asked her whether there were two shots in both. And she said, yes. And I said, uh, you know, are they different sizes? She said, no, they're exactly the same ones, just iced. (laughs) So $7 doesn't make sense in my mind. But you own a cafe, so you let me know whether am I justified in my $7 outrage TikTok that I made. I didn't call them out. I didn't mention them, but I made a TikTok about my frustration. Um, Or are you like, no, I can justify why they've done that? Nah, I can't justify it being like $7 more. Mm -hmm. It's just a given that ice drinks are more than hot hot drinks, but there's no like definite reason as to why. That's literally just the way that it is in cafes. Mm-hmm. And so I'm fully with you on your argument of like, it doesn't really make sense that they're a different price at all. The cups definitely would be slightly different cost, like especially for cafes that put them in like a flat lid, like clear cup kind of thing compared to your usual coffee cup. Um, Which by the way, sorry to interject, but just to let you know as well, it was eat in. So I got my coffee in. in. It. it was dine in. So I got so my you coffee. you weren't even in. getting a cup. No. So, I mean, that's, that also doesn't take into account. But, yeah, anyway, go on. Yeah, it's just one of those things. And I remember when we were doing our pricing for our cafe, like we were looking up like all the cafes around Newcastle and like what everyone charges for everything. And you'll just notice that every cafe does charge more for an iced. You're right. There's no extra work because um, you're not heating up the milk. You're pouring it straight in. I'd say the only thing is like there's a lot of ice. Um, and I know people are like, oh, ice is free, but like you have no idea how much those ice machines are and how much it costs to run those ice machines because they're running 24-7. Yeah, okay. But even then, like that's not the reason why you're putting the price up. That's just the way that it is. Like an ice latte is always like two bucks more or whatever. 
Um, but I can't understand why they would be charging $12.20. So two bucks more, I kind of understand because if I actually think about it from a really critical standpoint, oh yeah, if you heat the milk, obviously the milk expands, you know, and you put your mil- milk in your jug and you heat the milk, it obviously expands. So you're using, I guess, less milk for a regular mocha, right? Hot mm. mocha. But I guess with the uh, iced version, like you're using more milk because you're not heating it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't expand as much. That's the only reason that I can justify that extra two dollars yep but seven you no i don't understand that at all like yeah i don't don't know our prices off the top of my head like i think our hot coffees yeah five (laughs) dollars fifty or something and then Mm -hmm. i think the ice is six dollars fifty or something like a dollar or two dollars more at most which is fair because of the milk situation and the ice costs a lot and then you're getting a straw and like we use these um bamboo straws which are like they never go soggy like there's all these little costs that come into it but it's just the way that it is in like hospitality and cafes, is mm. it? The ice drinks are more. But $12.20? Surely fucking not. I think you're going to have to go back. I think you're going to have to go back, order both of them, and see what the actual fucking difference is. Because, like, did she not know what she was talking about? And th- was she thinking that you were asking for an iced coffee, which then has like um, ice cream in it and everything? Like, I, had, I need to know. The, the details. Yeah. Or was it genuinely an ice fucking mocha with no ice cream or anything in it? I mean, she had one of those screens that shows me. Oh, yeah. And it said iced mocha. So if it's got all that other stuff in it, surely it would be called a frappe or like a, yeah. you know. Or maybe their ice mocha does have like whipped cream and ice cream and chocolate syrup and everything. Right. Well, that's what someone said. Like yeah. people said in the comments, well, maybe it's got ice cream in it. Maybe said, that's what they do. I said, well, first of all, I've ordered it on oat milk, so you shouldn't be putting ice cream in my <laughs> So true. When anyway. people are like, can I have an oat <laughs> Oh, ice mocha or like ice coffee kind of thing. But then there's a big dollop of fucking dairy ice cream in there. <laughs> so I, I'm i pretty sure. I've also, from memory, I've had coffees from this place before. Yeah. And I don't recall ever having anything but just like coffee and milk, literally. You're going to have to go back and like I think I'm going to have to because yeah. I woke up this morning to emails from the, you know, the Daily Mail and Seven News and things saying we want to do a You're story on this. You're going to have to investigate. Yeah. So now I'm going to turn into this whole big thing and I might have to go and... Um, <laughs> Coffee gate. I definitely plan to go back because the thing is people, there's a lot of things that I am, but one thing I ain't is a liar. <laughs> and I hate being <laughs> You need called, to prove it. Like, you know how like I'm always like, I don't care what anyone says about me. If you call me a liar and I am telling the truth, I get real offended. Mm-hmm. So I'm when when I put on that video, like so many other comments are like, this can't be real. Like well, that's what I surely thought, you've exaggerated like $12 this. $12.20 yeah, you actually fuck. messaged me and I'm said, like, is, is this, this a joke? Real? Yeah. yeah. You're gonna have to go back. I wish I lived closer because I'd come with you. Yeah, for sure. Um and I haven't named them yet, but I don't know whether I'll name them in that next video. Oh we don't because <laughs> that, well, I don't want to like Maybe we should like why don't we genuinely reach out to them and ask them, like genuinely. Yeah. Where do you get off? I mean, I think that they'll it's a cafe in the eastern suburbs. I think they'll survive. But also <laughs> I think like the the reason I'm not the reason I want to say their name is not to expose them or be like, we're calling them out, but it's because people don't believe me. Yeah. So I'm like, to justify like the truth behind the video, I'm like, do I have to well, be like, this is where it is and this is how much it well, costs? Well, maybe you don't need to sh- say the name, but if you go there and get the same, to, like buy a normal mocha and mm-hmm. buy the ice one and mm-hmm. then like just show the screen if it says the price or show your receipt mm-hmm. and then show the product side by side. Then yeah. people will believe you. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that tomorrow and I might upload it tomorrow. So maybe scrollers, if you're listening, um, that video will be up today on the TikTok. You're going to have to do it because I genuinely want to know too. Like, I want to see this. Yeah, okay. Well. So, please go back there. We'll figure it out. Okay, sorry. This conversation isn't done, scrollers. We just took a little break to move on to the next segment. But I thought, let's just look up the menu of this place just to see, like, was I just out with the fairies when this happened? We've just looked it up. And a coffee is four dollars forty, and that makes sense because for then a I, small, that, for a small, and then I added my, which I asked for a regular, but here on the menu there's only small and large. This could be like an outdated menu as well, mind you. But the small was four forty, and then I added the oat milk, so that's five twenty. So that's where I got the five twenty from. Mm-hmm. But then even with a large coffee, um, that's only five seventy, so an extra fifty cents for a large as opposed to a small. Then they've got iced coffee, and Brittany made a good point. Iced coffee. Like, a lot of people get confused with that as well. Like, they come in and say, can I have an iced coffee? But they actually want an iced latte. So, iced coffee is when it comes with ice cream, whipped cream on the top, usually like a drizzle of whatever. Like, it's the full works. Mm -hmm. Whereas your iced latte is literally just your shots of coffee, your milk, and your ice. 
But I think I recall going there once before and not having that whole experience. It really was just an iced mocha with like the yeah. milk and the chocolate and the coffee. But Brittany was like, well, maybe that's why it's because here on this menu that's online, it says $11. But I think it was actually like more 11 40 and then plus 80 cents for the oat milk. But anyway, what gets me is there's an iced long black. And with an iced long black, you're not having whipped cream, you're not having ice cream, you're not having drizzle, you're not having anything. It's just coffee and water, right? Iced long black. That's $7. But a yeah. large coffee, if I wanted a large cappuccino, that's $4.90. So their prices are not real. Yeah. Like, this is something's gone wrong. You're gonna and have to go I'm going back. to you're investigate. Gonna have to. This is a fucking full blown investigation now. You've also got me stressing about our fucking prices. I'm gonna have to go back and check. <laughs> but the other thing to remember here as well, um, if we're just speaking generally about coffee and pricing and everything, when it comes to running a cafe, like, you barely make any fucking money. Mm. And I know people are always like hating on cafes for charging this, that, and the other. Like, you barely make fucking shit. Like, yeah. it's extremely hard to get a profit off, like, Running a coffee shop. Yeah, but like, I'm. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> but if the coffee was nine dollars fifty and the iced was eleven dollars fifty, that I'm on board. More, yeah, I'm on board. I'm like, the, you charge the your drastic prices. Difference makes it's no the, sense. It's the customer that has to pay the money. If I, if your prices are too expensive, I will not shop there. Like mm-hmm. that's how it is. If you want to price it, but in my brain, I don't understand how it's less than five dollars for a coffee and more than five, uh, ten dollars. Sorry, more than yeah, ten dollars for no a, sense. an iced coffee. If like, their ice long black is $7, like the ice mocha should be around that price or maybe slightly more because it is having milk, mm. not $12. My God. My stress levels are already through the roof <laughs> and we haven't even bloody started the podcast yet. Well, in other news, mm. I don't know if you watch my stories. Yeah, I do, unfortunately. <laughs> uh I I have finally watched Bridgerton. Mm. Finally. It's been a journey for the last couple of weeks for you, hasn't it? Yeah. And I've watched it very quickly, I'm, I must say. Like, really easy to watch. Um, and I've absolutely loved it. I remember when it came out and, like, everyone was talking about it, like, a few years back. And I remember watching, like, I started the first episode and I was thinking, nah, this isn't for me. Like, I don't know what it was, but I couldn't get into it. And then I think Netflix just kept recommending it to me and people have been talking about it more now because there was that, like, Bridgerton ball in Melbourne oh, yes. the other week. Did you see? Which is so fun. Yeah. Like, I love a fucking dress up. Me too. Can you have a party and make it a theme, please? Yeah, I'm thinking of making my 30th a theme. What happened to Fiji? Yeah, we're going to that. T- Darling, I'm doing f- I'm doing four things for my 30th. <laughs> Honestly, we're going to Fiji. We're doing. I'm doing a rooftop thing. I'm doing a nice fine dining dinner that I will pay for for all my friends. And then Ooh. I'm also doing another um, with uh, that'll be my close friends. Anyway, I'm spoiling everything. And then I'm also going away for the weekend with some of my friends as well, and booking a house out on you know acreage and just oh, having that. long lunches and blah blah blah. So because I've got it's so many different happening. friends yeah. of different socioeconomic make- statuses that oh. you know not everyone could come to Fiji with us, darling. So we've got to we've got to. <laughs> We've got to do something that includes everyone. You're so what? inclusive. Why are you laughing? You're so inclusive. Yes, thank you. I am. Always thinking of everyone. It doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> you, you're on okay, the Okay, so bed, are you right? going to do a theme for one of those festivities? Yeah. Oh, so the 30th. I'm, I'm thinking of, um, I saw this Real Housewives of, uh, it was one of the Ultimate Girls trips they did, uh, the most recent one. They did a, um, like, it wasn't neon. But it was something, ne- the theme was neon, oh, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, everyone looked really good. Blue like disco theme? No, 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 no. <laughs> so it's not neon as in like aerobic swear and like 80s neon. No, it's like you're wearing like hot fuchsia pink. Okay, like so just the bright. bright highlighter yellow. Did but, you ever but have like, parties that was like tight and bright? Yeah. I went so, to some parties like that. So it's those colours, but couture, you know? So yeah, you're wearing okay. a gorgeous dress. You're not coming in aerobic gear. Okay. Yeah. Me shows up in aerobics gear. And then I thought I could do something fun, like everyone's in bright colours and then I come in stunning black or silver or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. So just throw, throw everyone off. Like, you know, it's those um, people who go, oh, we're having a birthday, everyone wear red and then they wear black. And yeah. it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, anyway, I've watched Bridgerton. I absolutely fucking love it. I feel like I'm the last person in the world to watch it. I always thought it wasn't going to be for me, just the whole theme or whatever. But so I, what made you fall in love with that? Hmm, just everything. The story, the drama, just all of it. Like, there's so much drama. It's just, 
weird. And I think it's the um, <laughs> fascination. What are you laughing at? Well, Sky watches Bridgerton too, and I'm just thinking to myself, you, you're going, I'm saying, what do you like about it? Because every time he's got it on, every time he's got it on, there's a sex scene happening. Oh, yeah. Every time, I, I will walk past him watching and I'm going, oh, you're watching your porn again. Because <laughs> every time someone's naked, they're in bed, they're in a carriage, they're up against a wall. Well, can I say, when it comes to watching sex scenes in any show or any movie, I am so awkward. Like, I don't know if that's like a universal experience, but I feel so fucking awkward. And all Even I can- when you're alone? Yes. <laughs> I want to say even when I'm alone, I feel awkward. I feel like I'm in an intimate moment that I shouldn't be a part of. <laughs> but then I also start thinking, man, this must have been so awkward for them to film and I'm picturing like the camera crew all around them. You know, like imagine how awkward it'd be to film a fucking sex scene. And then I start thinking, oh my God, they would have partners on the outside. How awkward for them to be doing this. Yeah. And they're not really having sex, but like in Bridgerton, there's ones where like you can see their hand going up the skirt and like the girls <laughs> acting like, you're acting like you're getting fingered, <laughs> but you're not, but you have to act it out. And there's like 50 crew watching. Yeah. Do, do you feel awkward when you watch that? No, not at all. <laughs> um, but I do think about all of that yeah. sort of stuff. And like, obviously now these days they have like sex coordinate intimacy coordinators or whatever they oh. call it. so that it's it's all actually choreographed like a dance yeah. every movement but like do the guys get a boner oh surely surely like that's what i always think too like but what also, if he's like and they're fully making out like as if a guy especially like wouldn't get a little boner but also as you said you got 50 crew watching you so it's yeah, like maybe. i feel like i'd be underperforming if uh, I had an audience, you know what I mean? Do you think you could, like, if you were given some acting opportunity, do you think you could pull off a fake sex scene? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Should I? What? Should I give it a go right now in the studio? No! Oh. <laughs> it, it, it depends. It depends. Because they do it really well. Like, in Bridgerton, all those sex scenes, like, they seem... Real. Yeah. And they fully get into it. Like, you know how sometimes you can tell sex scenes are, like, rushed or, like, they'll put, like, their head in front of the other person's head so, like, it yeah. kind of covers the kissing or whatever. Like, they're very intense sex scenes in Bridgerton. Which is probably why the show is so popular. You reckon that's why? Yeah. I don't but, know. I just, I've loved it. Well, now I'm off thinking about me doing a sex scene and <laughs> I'm just wondering how, what that would look like. Because I'm going, um, you know, if I got booked in a role, is it male, male? Is it male, female? What's oh. going on? You know what I mean? Like, well, okay, if you're an you... actor, you've got to do things, you know, you, you don't, you got to okay, act like someone if, else. If you had to choose, which one do you think you could pull off better? If Would, would it be a with a girl? Or do you reckon you'd pull it off better with a guy? <sighs> Do you reckon it'd be easier if it was a girl? Because then obviously, like, you're not into having sex with women. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really making you think I don't here. know. See, it's, it also depends on the money. Yeah. <laughs> Realistically, yeah. how much am I getting paid? Because if I'm getting paid a lot of money, okay, what I, I, if, no matter who it is, I'm giving it a red hot go. Here's you know a what hypothetical I mean? for you. Mm. You're not getting paid anything at all. Oh, okay. You're doing it for free, but it's going to be like the number one movie. Like, it's going to be the no, next Titanic. No, I don't work for exposure. Sorry, exposure if, don't pay the bills. But what if it's, like, the next Titanic? No, nah, too bad. It or wouldn't do it. Potentially going to lead to other opportunities. The thing is, I wouldn't know it was going to be the next Titanic until after I'd done it. Yeah, no so one can guarantee that. This is that. another one of those hypotheticals that we were talking about the other yeah. week. Like, what if you didn't know and you turned it down, then it turned out to be the number one movie? Well then my life stays the same. It's like yeah. the million, billion dollar question, isn't it, from our Close Friends episode? But True, true. Yeah, because, like, I feel like I've I've had my time of doing things for exposure mm. and that no longer at this point in my life is something, you know, oh, go and do this and it could lead to other opportunities. Nah, unless you've got a check, darling, sign the dotted line and pay me my money, I'm not doing anything. And I believe that's how everyone should work. Yes, no one should do anything for free. Like, for example... Um, we had, like, I did this call out in our Fate Society Facebook group because we're wanting to include customers in our content more. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I said, I'm, I'm looking for a customer in Melbourne who has shopped in store with us before. We want to create a content piece on you, mm -hmm. um, just a testimonial thing. And the, like, we had heaps of people reply saying, me, 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 me. And, um, like, we didn't want to get, someone in and like make a video with them and then like that's it kind of thing and I remember I said to this customer who came in we filmed the video I was like you can have 500 bucks worth of stuff like it's 
it's all yours. And then she like didn't even want to take that. But I think this that's that mentality that people have where they will just go and do stuff for nothing. And I was like, no, fucking take whatever you want. She was like, no, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. But to that I say, always get something in return for what you're doing. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know? See, I feel like it's a wild concept to talk about, but then I feel like it's, to me, wild that people would work for free. Because my thing is like, okay, so for example, I know this is unrelatable, but let's say with the job I do now, which is content creation, like if a brand was to be like, hey, come in like, you know come down to Bondi, we're doing an activation, which this has definitely happened. Come down, we're giving away free lip balms all day. And, you know, some people might go, oh, well, if I go, then it might lead to more opportunities with that brand in the future because I've done this one thing for free. You know what yeah. I mean? Whereas, I like, feel like when we were smaller, like starting <laughs> out back in the day, we definitely did a lot more things for free to build those relationships mm-hmm. with those brands. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's shifted now. Well, I think that two things have shifted. One is I feel like that never leads to opportunities anymore. If a brand wants to work with you, they will pull the money up front and work with you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't need to do any of those. But maybe that's just me because I'm actually relevant and maybe people who aren't relevant need to... (laughs) What? (laughs) Why do you keep laughing at everything I'm saying today? Like, sorry for speaking my truth, but not me being the most in-demand queer creator in Australia. But anyway, um, I am, am relevant. I don't think that's... Yes, a bad you thing are, to you say. are worth what you Hello, are Hello, number one podcast in our hearts. Anyway, I'm, I know what I'm worth. Anyway, the other thing is no one would have expected me 10 years ago when I was working in a fast food restaurant. Like, no one would have expected me to just come in and work for four hours and not get paid for it. Exactly right. Is that not illegal? Yeah. So, like, why am I expected to do free things in my... I'm just too old and That's too... That's one thing that we've also done in our business as well is we have always paid people for a trial mm-hmm. and... I don't know if the laws have changed recently and if you have to pay people for trials, but for the whole time I've had fate, anyone that's come to do a trial, we pay them. As but, in like you, they've had an interview and they've yeah, come Yeah, and then they do a little a trial, trial, like oh. a one-hour trial or whatever. Like yeah. we always pay people, whereas I think it's common for people to do a trial and it's just an unpaid trial kind of thing. But we've always paid people because that feels like the right thing to do. Even if they don't get the job, we're still going to pay them for that time that they were in our store or in our cafe serving mm-hmm. customers. And you know what? The other life lesson here for you is time is more important and more valuable to me than money. So, like, my thing is I would rather spend the time doing something I actually want to do because you can always make more money in the future, but you are never guaranteed more time, you know? Exactly right. So it's like, for me, I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time doing something. Even with all the, like, you know, movie premieres and stuff I get invited to, I will only go if, one, I'm getting paid, or two, I want to actually see the movie. Yep. If I have no interest, like, I'm not getting out of bed. But there are all these people who go to the opening of a fucking envelope <laughs> and, and you see them, they're all, you know, not all from, but, like, they're the ones from the re- reality shows, and I'm sure people are coming to your mind as I'm saying that. They are at every single thing mm. you could imagine possibly being invited to. They're there, getting their photo, <laughs> doing their thing. And I just think, like, some of them, they've been doing that for three, four years. Where's it gotten you? You know what I mean? Like, are you not exhausted? Because... Because you are watching them go to all these things. You're exhausted for them. Well, I'm exhausted for them, but I mean, I, I, I just think, like, if you got it, you got it, and if you don't, you don't. You know what I mean? And, like, if they're at every single event and not getting booked and busy for paid work, are you not exhausted? Because I'm over here thinking, <laughs> babes. These people need to get booked. Is this shady? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't really care, though, because it's like... This is our hot podcast. We can say whatever we want. I know, and I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm just, I'm just like, in my brain, it doesn't make sense to waste all that time. And from the other side as well, brands will take whatever they can get for fucking free off people. This is exactly. the other thing. Like, the brands love this shit. They love people showing up for free, doing things for free. That's why they host events and all that. Like, mm-hmm. as a brand, host an event and just invite people to a whatever, like whatever party you're throwing Mm -hmm. and like you're getting people to come for free, post about you, tag you because they've come to your event and you haven't had to pay them shit. Yeah. So it's very clever on the brand's part. Yeah. And that's the whole point of these events. Yeah. Is for brands to get free exposure. And I think as well recently there's been this shift with brands that now they almost expect you to post regardless of your thoughts and feelings, which I don't love. So I always make it clear, like, whenever I get... Whenever a brand wants to send me a PR package, let's say, they will be like, we're sending this out in exchange for one TikTok and a share on your 
story or sometimes they just say share on your socials and it's up to me to decide. I always go back and say, hi, um, no, not guaranteeing that. Feel free to give it to someone else if you don't um, want to risk me not posting, but I'm always going to try something first and only recommend what I want to recommend to my audience. And I've never actually had anyone like deny the PR package and be like, oh, we won't bother sending it because then they look a bit stupid if they like just want. But my thing is with um, like events that I've been to, again, I only go and if I enjoy myself, I will post about the event. Or even if I don't enjoy myself, I might post about it. But the thing is, there's like this expectation that because you were invited, um, you must post about it. And I I'm think like, that's no. That's a feeling that it gives you, though, going to these events is like, oh, they invited me. I went, I had drinks, I had food. So then influencers feel like they have to post about it. Nah, not me. But then I have brands follow up and I just reply myself and go, hi, I didn't enjoy myself or I didn't enjoy the movie. I can't recommend this to my audience, blah, blah. I am, I feel like I'm known in the industry for doing that. Like brands, I feel like brands talk and go, no, oh, he didn't enjoy himself again. Because <laughs> I never bloody do, do I? At the end of the day, when am I ever enjoying myself? Not right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's kick things off, even though we're way into this episode already, Matt. With our Royal Flush of the Week, which is the best thing that we saw on the internet. Yeah. Do uh, you want me to start? Sure. Okay. Mine's only like a little, little fun one. You've probably seen it on my TikTok all weekend, which I'm so pissed off because I literally heard about this on like Friday afternoon and I'm like, God, this is such a good opportunity for us to make a fate dancing video, but I have to wait until like tomorrow to bloody do it because yeah. we haven't been at work over the weekend. A bunch of, I think it's Irish kids, have made an absolute banger of a song. Oh, have you I did seen see it? this. Yeah. And it's just so fun. I'll play a little snippet of it for you now. Well, that's just so fun and cool. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> what? So you hate that, but you love Jojo Siwa Karma? Yeah. <laughs> they, they give the same energy to me. That was a bad girl. That is some bad thing. You know what? If Jojo Siwa's Karma was playing, I could ace that sex scene, baby. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> what, with her um, vicious, like, yeah. humping that she does in the Come music? Come on, that's a little bit. Have you seen in the music video? She's, like, humping some chick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Well, I'm obsessed. Anyway, I love that song. Okay. It's an absolute banger. Um, it's called The Spark and it's by Cabin Crew. I'm guessing that's the kids. And L- Liz Dunvana Crew. I- I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, it's a bunch of kids just having fun. They've made a drum and bass <laughs> song. And good on them. I fucking love that. I love that. I still want to release a song with you one day. We need I think to. We could, we could be better than them. Surely, what, Nova's would it be got a parody song? Nah, I reckon nah. I could come out with a genuinely good song. Nah, but yeah. Well, yeah. A pop song. Yeah. And a um, rock song of a pop song. Oh, cover. like the 2024 version of "We Found Love." You know. What? We could do the 2024 version of "We Found Love" by Rihanna. Oh yeah. You know, let's do it. Song of the summer. We still got time. Yeah, let's make it happen. Okay. You know, well, I mean, I can't speak for bloody the big celebs, but you know that, like, me recording Rad and Scomo, and when you recorded your song, like, was it like just a couple hours of recording? Yeah. Yeah. How wild is that to to like? I know that Ariana Grande is probably spending weeks on one song, but like, the fact that I just went in, recorded it. And the song was done in like a few hours. I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh my god, this is actually." If I knew how to do it all, I wish I knew how I'd to do be it. Like banging out software. songs each day. I reckon I could fucking do it. Yeah. Anyway, that's your little fun fact of the week. Oh my god, I forgot I had to do my royal flush. What okay, is it? This is like definitely not the best thing I've seen on the internet this week, but I just want to talk about it because I just think it is so fucking hilarious. Did you see that the Pope has been forced to apologize? after saying there's too much faggotry in the church. (laughs) Are we allowed to say this on the podcast? Yes, I am one. I am one. Faggotry. Did he actually say that? Let me tell you, it is so funny. So he used the word, like, 
in whatever language he speaks that translates loosely to faggotry, but he meant like gay people and faggots. No. Um, whatever the homophobic slur in his language is, it translates Why to that. Why would he anyway, say that? It was in a meeting, like, behind closed doors, like, in a, like, church meeting of some sort. He said that there was too much... I I can't even say the word because me and my (laughs) friends say this word as, like, you know, if we see something so gay on the side of the road, like, if we see, like, something fabulous and gay, like, even more than camp, we go, oh, faggotry. You know, we just look at it and go, oh, look at the faggotry of it all. (laughs) so funny that the Pope, to imagine, just picture that, Brittany, just picture the Pope out the back of the church with all the ministers no. sitting there going, it was too much faggotry in here, boys. I'm like, well, first of all, whose problem is that, darling? It's the system yeah. you've created. But apart from that. Cancelled. I mean, it's not my favourite thing I've seen on the internet, but fuck, it's hilarious. Yeah, what the heck? It's low-key hilarious. And I know that, you know, some queer people would be very upset by the use of of this word. Um, not me. I'm sitting here pissing myself. When I saw that, I went, I am living in a simulation. The fact that I'm looking at the news right now and it says the Pope, like, and the fact that, like, on sunrise, it's like, the Pope has been forced to apologise after using a homophobic slur and it says down the bottom of the screen, Pope apologises for saying faggotry. Did it's they just, write that? Well, they put the stars in it, oh, though. Yeah. It was like F star 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 T-R-Y. But I was just like... I'm like, we aren't living in a real world. Like, what is going on? You know? Another thing that has been circulating on my FYP over the weekend, Matt, and I'm sure it has on yours as well, is a viral video by Dr. Leslie Dobson. She's a psychologist, parenting, safety, true crime, satire, intentionally disturbing. So she's not afraid of saying what she thinks. She has made a video about shopping carts, a.k.a. trolleys, Mm -hmm. And this video has 10.6 million views. She's that proud of it that she's pinned it to the top of her TikTok page. And this is what she said. I'm not returning my shopping cart. And you can judge me all you want. I'm not getting my groceries into my car, getting my children into the car, and then leaving them in the car to go return the cart. So if you're going to give me a dirty look, fuck off. (laughs) <laughs> this has sent the internet into an absolute tizzy. Like, there are so many stitches to her video. Mm-hmm. For me personally, this video says everything we need to know about her as a person. Yeah, but it's satire. Nah, do you reckon? Yes, you have just you just read she out her bio. That. Satire and what, what was the last word on her bio? Something about, like, baiting or something like that? Or rage baiting or something? Intentionally disturbing. Oh, where did I get rage so baiting do, from? Do you, do you think um, she's disturbing. just joking? Yeah, I think she's... she's And she's a psychologist. She would know how people are going to react. She's, so done she's done, done a, that she, on purpose. She's done a... I haven't watched it, but there's another video here that's titled Shopping Cart Follow-Up. Should we yeah, play okay. that? Yeah, I haven't seen this one, but let's go. It's May 31st and about 6 million people have freaked out over me not returning my shopping cart because my kids are in the car. So I want to give you some statistics. Last year, 265 children were abducted in parking lots in America. Half of those were sexually assaulted. As a single mom returning your shopping cart, you are prime for a predator to watch and grab you. In many states, it's actually illegal to turn your car on and walk away. Many comments said that they would turn the car on, leave the air on for the kids and go return the shopping cart. So she's defending herself. So this tells me she's not lying. Like, yeah, she knows that her video is stirring the pot. But I think she's genuinely the kind of person that doesn't give a fuck and won't return it. And in the comments of this follow-up video, people are saying somehow all of us mums managed to return the cart. Mm. Someone else said, I put the groceries in the car, walk with the kids in the cart to the cart house. I'm guessing that's what they call it, like the shopping trolley bay. (laughs) I return it and then I walk back to the car with the kids. Bro, just return your cart. This is the thing a lot of people were saying on her initial video too. How did you get the cart in the first place? You took your kids with you to get the shopping trolley. Mm. So do you still reckon she's just doing it for bait? I don't know. Like, it's hard to tell because, like, I've def- I definitely have made videos on TikTok. Not on Instagram. It wouldn't work on Instagram. But on TikTok, I've definitely made videos where I'm like, I know this will get a reaction. Remember I've said before that that noise upstairs in my house that I'd 
lived in and every apartment I'd lived in over my, the years of living in apartments, I'd heard the same noise. So then I made this video that was like, I don't know if anyone else experiences this, knowing full well it would be something that everyone experiences. Mm. And then that went viral because like, so I'm like, she's a psychologist, so she's a smart woman. She's, well, we'd assume. And she also says satire in her bio and also whatever the other thing she did, said was. But my thing is, like, if you're gonna, if if you've gotten, if I made that satire video of the trolley and it got 10.6 million views, I'm not going to change my tune and go, hey, everyone, that was satire. I'm going to double down and, and say all of that because now that's going to get attention as well. It's only going to build my platform even more. Let's say... She is being serious, and this isn't part of her satire, funny, joking videos. Mm -hmm. Let's just take that out of the equation. Mm -hmm. If she's being dead serious, what do you think? What do I think in what? Like, because the whole debate online is like, if people don't put their shopping trolley back, like, that says a lot about who they are as a person. Yeah, well, it's literally meant to be like a litmus test for, like, whether you have moral character, whether you'll go out of your way to help someone else, because the whole thing is returning your shopping trolley. Sorry, I'm mansplaining. I hate when I do this. But the whole thing is, if you return your trolley, it's actually got nothing... Like, you're not helping yourself at all, but you're helping out someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, But then people go, oh, but shopping trolley people, like, have to collect them. That's their job. Blah, blah, blah. But then people are like, but it's just one less trolley they have to collect. And, like, what if it's raining? Like, everyone's been arguing on the internet about this. So I think the whole thing is, if you're someone who doesn't return your trolley, you are less likely to help others if you don't have to. Because there's no actual rule that no. says you have to put like the trolley back. it's just like a courtesy, right? right? Like a common courtesy. My thing is that it definitely depends on my mood. What, so you leave the trolley? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, I would probably say like, oh, in more recent years, probably even more, since I've actually learned about this whole litmus test thing, I now consciously try and go back. But, you know, it's I get a bit awkward when other things factor in to me putting my trolley back, which... Like which, what? No, but let me finish. Which, with the whole helping people thing, I think there would be other factors that would come into play of whether I would to, was to help someone or not, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's very fair. So if I've put my shopping, like, my trolley in the... If I've put my shopping in the car and there's a car waiting for my spot, I'll dump the trolley. Yeah, that's a good point. Because like, I'm if they're helping there with that their blinker on, like you don't have time to run all the way back in or to the thing if it's not near, right? Like to the little bay. And I'm like, if they really are worried and are judging me for leaving the trolley so that they can have a car spot, one that's on them, and two, they can take my trolley that I've left right there for them, and they can go and use that if they'd yeah. like to. You know what I mean? Like, so like other things might come into play. The other one is like, for example, a couple months ago, the trolley bay had not been cleared and there were trolleys literally rolling around the car park. So I didn't take my trolley back because I'm just going to add to that problem. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I will also admit, though, that half the time I start the car and Sky takes back the trolley, Sky will always take back his trolleys. See, of course, I'm you like can that imagine. too. Like, I'm that person. And uh, even like, um, I don't know if it was Bunnings, but I remember I like got a heap of shit from Bunnings and then I couldn't see the trolley bay anywhere like mm. near me. So then I'm that person. I take the trolley all the way back in the store, say hi to the person again that's like in the front and then I take it. You know how you have to go into Bunnings and put it in there? Like I got, I go that far yeah, to wow. literally put it back and then walk out again. Bye again. <laughs> like I can't not. <laughs> like I will take it all the way back into the fucking shop. Yeah. Even if it's like a 30 metre walk. Like, her being like, no, I will not take my trolley at all. Like, I go, you're a shit person. Mm. But I think, for me, I pick and choose. Depends on the circumstance. And I will say, it's like 90% of the time I'm taking it back. I'm never just so lazy that I just don't take the trolley back. That's the energy she's giving off. Yeah, for sure. I never park near people. And I also park at the back of the car park so that I... Can leave more- your trolley and no one can judge you. <laughs> well, no. It's well, I mean, maybe secondary, yes. But first of all, so I get more steps in. Started doing that. I park over in the back corner. One, so no one hits my car. And I just hate like with the trolley coming back to the car park and there's cars on either side and you can't get to your boot and blah blah blah. So I just find like parking way down the back is heaps easier. Um, and then I get more steps in. Um, and then um if I have to leave the trolley. Which I don't know why I've brought this up because realistically, I think in the last few years, like there's going to be like one or two times I've left my trolley. Like I feel like people are going to think that I like leave it all yeah, the time. Then try and cancel you. 
No, they won't cancel me for this. There's <laughs> many other things I've said in this podcast they could probably <laughs> cancel me for. I don't think they're going to start with the, whether I put my trolley back or not. But it's not a regular occurrence. But I think it shows, because the whole thing is it's a litmus test of would you, what lengths would you go to to help other people or do something that you don't need to do or isn't morally, you know, the law or whatever. My thing is I'm such a rule follower. So if it was a rule, I would put my trolley back every fucking time. That's why you should go to Aldi because then you got to put your $2 or $1 in and to get the dollar back, you need to take it to the trolley bay, plug it into the other one and get your coin back. But you hate Aldi, we all know. Mm. These days anything goes. I might start trying to shop at Aldi, although are the price is just the same as everywhere else now. Or I what? think you can still save a bit. I don't think it's as drastic of a um, price difference as it used to be, let's say like five to ten years ago. I feel like Aldi was significantly cheaper, but you definitely still can save money at Aldi. Also, why is that lolly that I'm eating taste like a Chardonnay? What? <laughs> like it's got a Chardonnay taste. Kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I'm thinking that's a glass of bubbly. Anyway. Um, so you're someone who puts your trolley back all the time. Always. I will go all the way back into the fucking shopping centre if I'm I can't find the trolley bag. I'm someone who'd say 90%. But also, is that because you'd hate for someone to see you leave your yeah, trolley? Yeah, it's definitely because, like, I can't fucking dump it there. Someone's going to see me. <laughs> yeah. I don't it's know. It's just a common courtesy, you know? Yeah, for sure. When you, if, you, if you're like her and she's like, nah, not doing it at all, the kids thing doesn't make any sense to me, um... Like, take but, your kids with you. Like, teach them a lesson. Like, say, let's come and put the trolley back. I feel yeah. like that's a little good life lesson in itself. So how do you feel then about as someone who owns a clothing store? I'm just using all your businesses today to justify Oh, things. even you can use an example when people just leave all their, like, rubbish around or whatever. Like, yeah. pick that up too. Oh, for sure. I See, I hate someone who leaves, leaves, rubbish, mess, l- like, leaves rubbish in a, like, fast food restaurant if yeah, you leave your bags like on the table. Yeah, like, they leave all their mess, pick especially if they've gotten up. takeaway and, yep. like, one of our toasties in, like, a tr- cardboard tray and then they just leave it all. Like, we've got a bin right there outside yep. for our customers and they yep. still just leave it. But it's just little things like that, like... If I even go out for dinner or whatever, like I'm the person that will stack all the plates nicely and like try and make it as neat as I can so that then it's making it easier for the waiter when they come to collect the plates Mm. and they're not like awkwardly leaning over you trying to stack it all and whatever. But that's just little things. Yeah. What are you going to say about what are you going to say about clothing stores? Well, like similarly to trolley or shopping cart, like if I go into the change rooms at Fate and I try on clothes and then they're not what I want, well. Where am I leaving them? What am I doing with them? Because if we want to use the litmus test, like the trolley, am I a better person for putting those clothes back on the rack where Good I got them question. from? Or am I leaving them either in the change room or is that worse than not handing them to a sales assistant? You know, there's like different. Yeah. So what would you say? We In all of our stores, we have like a little rack, like just outside the change room for mm-hmm. that. But in saying that, we don't have a lot of racks because I find the more opportunity that you leave for someone to dump their shit, they will. Let's take Zara, for example. Have you ever walked out of a Zara change room and they've got like really long, big rails and they're like double height and then it's just full of crap. So, like, when people see that full of crap or maybe in cotton on or whatever, everyone just, like, it's like an invitation to just dump your unwanted shit there. And I think it just creates mess. It looks like shit in the store. So, we just have little rails in the change room area. Um, But, like, it's fine for people to leave them there. Like, I would say it's kind of rude to, like, leave it just in the change room and walk out kind of thing because then that's annoying, like, if another customer does walk in Mm. and then they're like, is this someone's, like, is someone trying on things? Like, they don't know. Um, And you will get customers that go, oh, it's all right, I'll put these back. I think I'm that kind of person, but that's only because I have retail stores. Like, if I don't like something, I'll just take the two minutes to go and put them back where I found them. But like, we don't want customers to do that. Like we would rather them be handed to us and we'll go and do it. And cause sometimes they don't like put them back in the right spot anyway. Like they put the sizing all out of whack or the coat hangers backwards or whatever. Mm. But that's good to know. Cause I'm a put back where I found it. Me person. too. But then like, if you're going to go out to that length of putting it back, which is super nice and amazing, put it back in the right spot and yeah. like, don't just shove the size 18 at the front of the rack. Like, you've got to put it back exactly where it belongs because if not, then you're inconveniencing someone that's going to have to go and change it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So maybe it's easier if I just put my clothes on the rack. Yeah, or hand it to the sales assistant or say to the sales assistant, like, did you want me to put these back? And, like, if a customer says, do you want me to put these back, then we'll always go, no, 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 that's fine, I'll take it off you kind of thing. Yeah, nice. Right. There's a little lesson for everyone. Don't leave your shit in the change room crumpled on the floor. <laughs> 
Well, that's another episode done and dusted. And from what we've established in this episode, Matt. <laughs> I'm cooked. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> yeah. Nah, you're fine. I think I was pretty tame. Yeah, you're this fine. Episode. You're fine. You know what? I object to any scrutiny yeah. this week. You simply usually, do not accept. Usually I'm open to to constructive criticism this week, stuff yours. You want to send a constructive criticism? Send it to our email, scrollers at novapodcast.com.au. <laughs> That'll be linked down in the the, the uh, show notes for you. Um, me and Britt don't check that email, so we won't see the feedback, but our producer <laughs> will, and she will not let us know because I don't want to hear it this week. You know what I mean? Anyway. All the usual shit. Yeah, people. God, I can't be bothered, you know? We're, Just do all the things. All. Leave us five stars. Subscribe if you haven't. Download every episode, please. <laughs> That's about it. Anyway, Dal, I better let you go. There's too much faggotry going on in here. <laughs>